Inside Pediatrics contains real-life surgical scenes in a hospital environment. Viewer discretion is advised. On this episode of Inside Pediatrics. Zay had such poorly functioning lungs that we all felt if she did not go onto this machine that it was highly likely that she would die. I'll never forget the phone call. Toughest thing you ever hear, that your 10-year-old uh, son has cancer. In the middle of America lies one of the busiest independent nonprofit children's hospitals in the country. Go inside the operating rooms and the transports. Go inside each family's journey, each patient's story. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Go inside pediatrics at Children's Mercy, Kansas City. What's up? What are we gonna do today? Chill. Five-year-old Martin was adopted from Bulgaria when he was just two years old. At that time, we felt like it was not just kind of an aspiration, but like a humanitarian like necessity. Like if we if we weren't doing it, we'd be doing the wrong thing. His parents soon realized something was very wrong. When he first came home, he was like not just not walking, like not crawling either. The diagnosis was cerebral palsy. Just seeing Martin's incremental growth has taught us to really make every day an adventure. He's only five, but an old soul. He's a wise little dude. Martin's complex case requires specialized care. We have one of the nation's best children's hospitals right at our back door in Kansas City. Years of treatment at Children's Mercy Kansas City have given Martin better control of his muscles. Martin loves riding bikes, and all of our physical therapists were over the moon happy that he was riding bikes. It's recreational therapy. Like, he's getting physical therapy. He doesn't even realize that he's doing it because he's enjoying himself. I want to ride my bike. It's this huge source of independence for Martin. But biking isn't enough. Martin still needs surgery to reposition his leg bones and release his tightened muscles. At the Children's Mercy Human Performance Lab, computer-assisted tracking devices map Martin's movements. Using tools and technology such as instrumented motion analysis, we are now able to look at exactly how an individual is moving. The computer helps calculate the angles, the degrees, the exact measurement. There are few children's hospitals um, that have a comprehensive movement center to take care of kids with neuromuscular disorders. When I saw Martin um, and just watched him walk, I actually considered loosening up his calf muscles. The data um, from the study made it quite clear to me that loosening up Martin's calf muscles would be the wrong thing to do. I actually did alter my treatment plan based on the data from the lab. We like to be outside and hike and bike, and, and everybody agreed that this is gonna be like the best option for Martin to get as much mobility as possible. You did it. You did it. Bree's daughter, Zay, was a happy, healthy 15-year-old. It was unusual for her to text her mom during the day. I received a text from Zay, who was at school. She said that she felt dizzy, like she might pass out, and she just didn't feel good. And then her next text was, please hurry. We went into the ER in Wichita. Within that first 24 hours in Wichita, they ruled out uh, common bacterial infections, um, the standard viral panel. Everything was coming back negative, but her symptoms were getting worse. Zay's lungs deteriorated rapidly. After consulting specialists at Children's Mercy, the decision was made to transport Zay to Kansas City. So I said, okay, are we gonna drive today, tomorrow? And they said, no, we're gonna take her by flight now. I met Zay on a Saturday morning. She started to decline very rapidly. She had what we call bilateral air leak, which is the lungs are leaking air into spaces that it, it shouldn't be. Um, and when that happens, we know the lungs are so damaged that we really can't use the ventilator to support her. And so that's when we decided that she should go on to ECMO. ECMO is pretty much the highest form of life support. It's not gonna fix anything, we're just buying them some time, and then it's not without complications. It takes 
one person to run the machine 24 hours a day and that's their only job. It takes at least one person to take care of Zay and that's their only job. It's a respiratory therapist, the physicians, the ECMO core team. In only a few days, Zay has become one of the most critical patients in intensive care. But her diagnosis is still a mystery. Zay had such poorly functioning lungs that we all felt if she did not go onto this machine that it was highly likely that she would die. We uh, were placed on ECMO support and she has this Avalon cannula going into her uh, right jugular, uh, exchanging her gas through her blood and that's when our journey began. It started with a symptom of the common cold, a badly swollen lymph gland. Then 10-year-old Peyton Grimm learned he had Burkitt-like lymphoma. Peyton's cancer is very rare. He has a lymphoma, which is a cancer of some of the cells that help us in our immune system. We only see about two to three cases per million people a year, so pretty rare. OK, you ready? ready? Is that nice hand. and tall? Nice and tall. So brave. We were able to get Peyton seen in our clinic the same day that we received the referral, which is extremely important for his type of cancer because it can be so fast growing. Aggressive chemotherapy began immediately. You know, as a mom, you want to be able to fix everything, and suddenly this is something we cannot fix. So like I told Dr. Tolbert that day, I'm trusting you with my baby here. So do everything you can to get him well. Dr. Tolbert checks Peyton's labs to see if he's healthy enough to be admitted to the hospital for his third round of chemo. Results are back. What do you are think? we staying or going? You're staying. Let's knock this out. <laughs> Yay! Let's get it done. A lot of the chemotherapy drugs are just that. They're poisons. They're toxins. That's how they kill cancers. And so they harm other cells within the kid's body. And so tailoring that dose limits the amount of those side effects. Not hurting anywhere? Nope. The face of cancer is always changing. We learn something new every day. Here at Children's Mercy, we have access to so many resources that ensures that we always stay on top of what's best for our children. Yeah, you hear these stories about chemo and how hard it is on your body and how sick you are. But overall, I feel like he's still able to mostly live his um, normal life at home. Staying strong through chemo is tough. It's even tougher for the Grimms because Peyton's dad is stationed almost 8,000 miles away. Peyton's dad, First Sergeant Brian Grimm, just finished his tour of duty in Qatar, but his biggest battle was being overseas while his son fought cancer back home. He hasn't seen Peyton in eight and a half months. Space party. I have no idea. You plan it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to have him back means that, like, we're complete again. Our family is all under one roof. Really nice for the four of us to be in the same room, to have all of us together. You know, it's it's an emotion when you leave, and then we get there, and you know, everything's going great, and then the rugs jerked out from underneath you with the news that we got with Peyton, and it was. Toughest thing you ever hear, that your 10-year-old uh, son has cancer. We're a family, we stay together and... surgery day for Martin. He's not afraid of surgery. He's afraid he's going to get a shot. Nobody likes seeing their kid scared or in pain, but when you understand like the big picture of it, it makes it easier. Child life specialist Megan Abbott steps in to calm Martin's fears. Hi, Martin. Hi. I was coming to see if I could come see you. 
I um, just met Martin in same day surgery, and it's my job to make sure he knows what he's here for today, make it not so scary, and help him cope with being here. So I have some things to show Fox. Is that okay? Yeah. Should we see if he wants to smell the strawberry? Or we have orange. Does Mr. Fox like it? I like it too. You too? <laughs> Is that your favorite? Yeah. yeah. As a child life specialist in surgery, I'm there to ease any anxiety leading up to surgery. It's very important that kids are prepared for what they're here for. Kids cope much better when they know what to expect. Should we ask the fox, did it hurt when this was on his face? Do you think it hurts? No, no ouchies, right? The mission of child life, from my perspective, is giving children a voice making sure that they have someone advocating for them and their emotional health. At Children's Mercy, we focus on the patient and making sure kids are still kids and serving the whole family. After choosing the smell of his anesthesia medicine with Megan and his stuffed fox, Martin is relaxed and ready for surgery. In pediatric intensive care, Zay's lungs have not recovered. She needs more time on life support to try to heal. Zay has been coughing up blood and battling blood clots, fevers, and medication side effects. She's been unable to eat solid food or even move her head off the pillow for almost a month. Bree asks her daughter if anything could help. She decided that she wanted to eat, and she barely had breath to talk, and uh, we asked her what she wanted to eat, and she said, tacos. <laughs> And I thought, oh my gosh, I, this is a girl who's been bed bound, hasn't had any therapy yet. And I watched her take an hour to make her, her soft taco and take her first bite. And so from the tacos <laughs> and tolerating that, the team decided that it would be okay for her to try to sit up in bed. The ECMO team had been working for months on how to help their patients sit up safely. Zay will be the first patient to try. So we kind of went back to the drawing board. We had never done this before, but we knew it's what she needed. Sitting gave Zay a bit of normalcy after living in the hospital for months. But she pushed the team further. She wanted to walk. I had had a conversation with mom pretty early on, and I had told mom, I was like, I'm so proud of how far we've come, and you know, she's doing things we've never done before but I know she wants to walk and we're not gonna be able to do that. In talking to Debbie later, she said she stepped back and she thought, well, why aren't we ready? If Zay's ready, why aren't we ready? Let's do it. Few pediatric patients have ever walked on ECMO. The Children's Mercy team decided to commit to this new goal. So we know that weight bearing, walking, sitting up, lifting weights, doing those types of things is so good for the body and so good for healing. So if she's motivated to do it and we know it's good for her, then we should figure out a way to do it. Any movement in Zay's ECMO cannula is life-threatening. After weeks of preparation, Zay is ready for her first historic steps. After being in a hospital bed on life support for nearly two months, Zay is very weak. A stumble or fall on her short walk could be fatal. Just so many departments had to come together to make this happen. Everybody felt like this is what was best for her to progress and um, rehabilitate on ECMO. Every movement was carefully coordinated by the ECMO and PICU teams. And then when she was ready, we did it. That's awesome, Zay. Zay is the first Children's Mercy patient to eat solid food, sit up, and walk on ECMO. Well, I think being connected to a life support system for months, there's no normal in that. Anything that we could do or give her that gave her a little bit of home was so important. Everybody who came together for Zay is a true example of patient-centered care. And just again, so proud of my hospital and my team. After 189 days on life support, Zay's lungs have healed enough to function with only a ventilator to help her breathe. She can finally be taken off ECMO. She was on for 4,556 hours, or um, almost 190 days. She really pushed our program in a lot of ways, um, and so it's hard to sign off at this point. <laughs> Surgery to remove the ECMO machine will end the longest ECMO run in Children's Mercy history.
She literally is like this. She can't move her neck. I mean, she can't do anything for 189 days without asking if she gets the siphon off. She could roll over in bed now without asking permission. I'm confident that we're gonna come off ECMO and our rate of improvement is going to just phew, take off. The final procedure in Peyton's third round of treatment is a lumbar puncture to determine if cancer is still present in his spinal fluid. Um, I have some new jokes for you, too. I'm trying to get started. What did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> Peyton, you know all my jokes. Good morning. You ready to get this thing done? Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting to work here because we are a comprehensive cancer center. So we have child life, we have our nurse practitioners, and everybody works together to ensure that that child can live as normal of their life as possible. Three, two, one. one. Breathe in. You ready for fentanyl? Big breath out. Thank you. Take those deep breaths. Breathe out. Ow. Okay. You're okay. You're, you're okay, bud. Okay? You're all right. Just breathe in. in. That's when you oh, yeah. Yep. Is it out? Yes, sir. It's out. You're done. Child life is amazing. I don't think we could do a procedure like that without child life being present. We did the lumbar puncture, um, so we just need to wait for a while and we can get home. Over 20,000 pediatric surgeries are performed at Children's Mercy every year. Today, Surgery Suite 4 is reserved for Dr. Keeler and Martin. I want to turn his knees forward, and this way Martin will now be able to use more of his energy simply to walk. My hope is that Martin will be able to walk independently. He's a superstar. This is a clean case. He is marked. Low fire risk. Low fire risk and antibiotic. Does everybody agree? I agree. I agree. First, Dr. Keeler lengthens Martin's thigh muscles to release tension on his knees. Four by four, please. Then she cuts and repositions Martin's leg bones. A steel rod and screws will hold the bones in place, properly aligning Martin's knees with his hips. So we've done one leg, and now we can already see the difference. Prior to surgery, um, he was not able to completely move his knees out because of his muscle tightness, and now he's able to kind of frog leg. I know for Martin, he's mainly just going to be excited that when he pedals his bicycle, he's not going to be hitting his knees up against one another. I'm delighted. All righty, let's get this kid out of the OR. What's really cool about my job is that I'm able to watch these kids grow up. I hope that I'm able to uh, stand there and see Martin on the starting line of his first bicycle race and then see him through to the finish line. That would be truly amazing. The successful surgery means Martin is one step closer to his ultimate goal, to walk unassisted. Dr. Keeler like, was able to do a life-changing procedure that's going to change the way Martin moves. Once Sleeping Beauty's awake, mm. we'll go see him he's not going to be happy but we'll be happy to see him though and then hopefully in seven to ten days martin and i are in the pool swimming It's been just two weeks since Martin's surgery. In just the short time that he's been back, it's been surreal to see him do things that at one point you think might not ever be possible. Dr. Keeler's unique post-operative approach eliminates six weeks of leg casting after surgery, so Martin's recovery is much faster. Before, he could not sit with his legs out straight in front of him, and he could not cross his legs. So he can do both of those things um, now with, like, ease. He was riding his bike at therapy, and his knees aren't knocking together, and he can so easily move in ways he could never do before. I want that bag in a bottle. With hard work and optimism, the future's bright. Brian Grimm has been looking forward to this home-grilled burger for months. Eight minutes on each side, and woo! So worth the wait. Right. 
but everyone is anxious as they wait for the call from Dr. Tolbert with the results from Peyton's scan. Oh. Hello? Hey, Christy, it's Dr. Tolbert. Hi. Well, Christy, we got his CT results back. OK. And all of his cancer is gone. Ah! All of it's gone? So we don't have to do it's the fourth round? Gone. So do we have to do the fourth round? He wants to know. We still have to do the fourth round because we want to make sure it stays gone. OK, that okay. sounds good. All right, well, enjoy your good news, OK? And enjoy the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Bye. Are you crying? You're not yeah, crying. that's I'm okay. not. <laughs> You're not crying happy tears? I'm excited. Wow. Cancer free. Back to normal. <laughs> Back at Children's Mercy, Zay is off ECMO. Her weak lungs struggle to breathe, even with help from a ventilator. But now, she faces another crisis. She, unfortunately, had a very difficult time coming off. She ended up having pulmonary embolisms, which were clots in her lungs. That's the same time that we were worried that she'd had a stroke. We were all beside ourselves with emotion for how to get Zay through this and thinking that maybe after all this time on ECMO, we weren't going to be able to. I appreciate you being honest. Zay's blood pressure and oxygen levels dropped. She stopped speaking. The team has few options left. Like, she's fought so hard. Like, I don't want today to be the end of her story. I'm coming On the next episode of Inside Pediatrics, we used very aggressive therapy to try to treat those blood clots, both in the lungs and what we thought was in her head. I mean, it's, it's the greatest feeling in the world. Doing this is going to save my son's life. You know, what more can a father do to his son than give him the gift of life? <laughs>